welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Everett is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. Hello, hello, Make Life Fun Soul Family listeners. Thank you so much for coming back and listening with us today and being here with us today. I have a treat for you. Today I have Jenny, Jenny, your, pronounce your last name, I-E, it's time. It's, it's- it's keen, actually. Keen, it's it's yes. German. I, you know what? When my <laughs> husband told me what his name was, I didn't know how to pronounce it either. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it was funny because we were doing long distance. And so the topic never came up because you're just talking on the phone, you know? And, uh, and finally, like six weeks into it, I was like, wait, how do you say your name? <laughs> So yes, I have Jenny Keen on the podcast with us today. Jenny, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Yay. I would love for our listeners to hear about yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do, who you are, and yes. Okay, awesome. I am an artist and I'm also a stay-at-home mother. I've been a stay-at-home mother for 10 years now because my my children are, I have four children and they are ages, by the end of the summer, they're going to be ages 11, 9, 8, and 6. But we're, we have all the birthdays in the summer. So we're in the mid of, middle of birthday season. And so it's like their ages are all scrambled at the moment. <laughs> But I've been a mom, like a stay-at-home mom with, you know, kind of stair-step kids. Mm -hmm. And I am an artist. I went to art school and was an exhibiting artist before motherhood Mm -hmm. and then have figured out how to make that work for me since motherhood, Mm -hmm. which I think is just this huge thing, you know, (laughs) it's really, really a huge challenge. And you know what, I'm just here to tell your listeners that it's really possible and really workable. You just have Mm -hmm. to take it one step at a time. So you know, it's, it's definitely, definitely can happen in terms of my artwork. I'm a mixed media artist. And so I combine a whole bunch of different stuff. I'm kind of a sculptor, like in terms of my sort of my natural, (laughs) natural tendencies, but I'm also really interested in drawing and photography. And Mm -hmm. so those all get combined together into this kind of digital artwork. I'm really passionate about helping support the personal development and Mm -hmm. just comfort, just general comfort of other people, you Mm -hmm. know, because I think you need that comfort, you know, to feel like, you know, where you are is okay. I mean, Hafiz says the place where you are right now, God circled on a map for you. Mm -hmm. So you're in the place you're supposed to be. Even if it doesn't feel great, <laughs> you it's know, so encouraging. So, yeah, well, and it's real. Like this is the, this is the reality, you know, we're here to learn and grow and we can't learn and grow without struggle, yeah, <laughs> without, exactly. without failing. If you can look at it that way. And I think motherhood is rife with that. And, you know, being an entrepreneur is rife with that. Mm-hmm. And being an artist is rife with that. You know, it's all really if you can be concentrate on being a learner and look at everything that doesn't go how you plan as an opportunity to learn more about yourself and the situation and what you're doing, then you're just going to be a much happier Mm -hmm. human being. And that goes the same with like learning how to be a mother, you Mm -hmm. know, because you have to learn how to be one. (laughs) It's a a journey. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It really is. It's massive and it changes. It keeps changing all the time. You know, it keeps like, you keep up leveling all the time. And when you up level, you get disoriented and you're like, wait a minute, it's, it's, everything's different. <laughs> I thought <laughs> you I know. had it all figured out. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you did just, that was the last step, right? <laughs> when you oh up level, it's like, oh my goodness. Right. <laughs> exactly. Oh my yeah. gosh. Kudos to you, mama. <laughs> 
kudos to you with four kids, like you said, that stair step and doing the thing and the artwork that you're doing. I've been able to see it and I think it is so amazing. It tells a beautiful story. Each piece, it tells a story and it makes you feel something. And that I think is the most amazing thing. Thank you so much. Thank you for saying that. That makes me feel really good. <laughs> cool. That's definitely the, that's definitely the aim. So I'm glad it's happening. It's ha it, definitely, you know? it, it is felt. <laughs> <laughs> and Yay, I know awesome. that before we started on air, we were talking about how in motherhood, the up-leveling piece that you're even talking about, some of us don't want to create these structures in motherhood. We want to just keep kind of our lives going the way they were and just kind of show up and be this mom. And it's not really modeled for us to have this structure in place. And you had this something so profound that actually touched my heart already by telling us that we can create these structures in motherhood. And so I would love for you to speak on that. Oh man, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up and I'm glad we talked about it before the podcast even started. Cause this is, this is like the pivotal piece. Okay. This is, this is the thing, this is the thing that makes it work. Mm. And it's, it's disarmingly simple, basically like in order to do anything, right. And this is not just in motherhood. This is not just in like entrepreneurial stuff or anything in order to do anything or in order to kind of like figure something out that's challenging. You've got a few stages you've, you've got to move through. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the first one that probably a, a lot of, well, I know a, a lot of a parent, all parents experience is that overwhelm, mm -hmm. right? You're in a place where something is not working for you. Right. <laughs> and a lot of times, like, that's how we figure out what we want, because we we're figuring out what we don't want. You have to walk through that to know for sure what you don't want. So that is a really valid, important step. It's really key. I also used to be a, a teacher, an art teacher in school. And actually it was enormously helpful in terms of my parenting because I had already been down the behavioral road mm -hmm. with so many children and I could see what these little behaviors would turn into. I had struggled so much with their behavior, especially when I was a new teacher, that when I started to see it starting to happen with my toddlers, I was like, oh no, <laughs> I know what I do not want. <laughs> and it is that right there times a hundred. <laughs> and if I let you do it now, it will come. I know that. <laughs> but I would, I would never have known that had I not been through that mm -hmm. difficulty as a young teacher, you know, as a, like a new teacher. The point I'm trying to make is that wherever you are in terms of overwhelm is really important mm -hmm. and just try to be grateful try to be grateful that firm lesson that is motivating you so much to change but the problem with overwhelm of course is that you don't even know where to start yeah. and you feel like you can't because you're so overwhelmed you, you have this feeling like you can't the first step that you need to do is not actually do anything different what you just need to do is observe what's mm -hmm. happening and give yourself time to observe give it a good week Okay. Cause there's going to be a pattern happening that is driving you crazy and you want to solve it, but you can't solve it until you've actually taken a little bit of a step back in your mind and taken just a little step out of that firefighting mode, which inevitably you get into, yeah. right? If you can step back and observe what's happening, then you're going to get the data so that you can be able to find the solution. Okay. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to skip the observing space. Yeah. They go, they go from like overwhelm to reaction overwhelmed to reaction. And then you end up, you just end up in a really reactive place, mm -hmm. which is not very, it's really hard to go directly for what you want when you're reacting. You're being motivated by something else that is not what you really want, right? So step back and observe, take a good week to figure out what exactly, what are the patterns that are mm -hmm. happening? So you're going to start to see the patterns and then the patterns are going to give you a clue as to what might be causing the situation. Mm -hmm. And they're also going to give you a clue as to what you could change to alter that situation, right? So for kids, a lot of it's gonna be like their daily routine. So you're gonna notice that they melt down at certain times of day, almost on cue, or they melt down after a certain activity that you do, or they melt down when you are feeling a certain mm -hmm. way, right? Like if you are feeling anxious and uptight that, you know, they're like a barometer, you yes. know, that tells you what the problem is, right? So after you've had that observing time for, if you give yourself a good week, you know, it might take two weeks for longer problems, mm. especially if you have older, like teenagers and stuff, you know, that takes a bit more observation because the problems are more complex. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's, that's okay. You know, however much observing time you need is, is good, right? Because you're getting that really good data. So you can make a more educated sort of attempt at, at yeah. fixing it. 
So once you've got the data, you're going to figure out something that you could try. It's going to happen because you're motivated to change, mm -hmm. right? And so you're, you are going to be thinking, okay, okay, maybe I could try this. Maybe that could be different. Maybe that could be different, you know? So my thing is to just hold off a little bit because you're going to think of the solution just give it another day or something mm. just to kind of finish the observation cycle so you can make sure that you you're sure that that's the right step to mm. take okay and then you try to implement the solution that you've come up with so at first it's overwhelm unhappiness and then it's observation and then you implement the solution mm. and you just focus on that one implementation because that's how you get the data to know what is working right yeah. if you try to fix like three things at once you're not going to know what worked so you just have to be a, a little bit patient and methodical and fix the one thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so then within usually within a day or two or something, you're going to know whether or not it worked. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and so then you can, then you can start to iterate. You're overwhelmed. Then you observe, then you implement, and then you iterate, you change whatever thing that you fixed that you're fixing to try to come closer to the solution. That's going to get you what you want. What right. You want. And then once you start to experience some success, just wait it out just a little bit, make sure it's really working well, and then you move on to the next problem. And you can be observing and making sure that that's working really well while you're observing the next problem. That's, that's cool. totally fine. You can skip to that stage, but don't, my, my thing is make sure you have one thing kind of figured out before, you know, roughly, you know, pretty much we're talking like 90, 95%, you've pretty much got it there. Right. And then you can move on to the next problem. If you go through those stages, you will be able to fix things once mm. rather than trying to fix them on a daily basis, like all the time, right? Mm -hmm. You're like trying to fix it 50 times, right? You're trying to fix it again and again and again and again and again. I mean, that is, that is the essence of firefighting and it's awful. It is, and <laughs> that know? is usually, that's what it feels like. It does feel like you're putting out fires left and right. And so I love the, yeah. I love the observing piece because that's the one you definitely want to skip. You want to automatically go from overwhelmed to fix the problem, overwhelmed to fix the problem. So I love that you're speaking on, give it time to breathe, give it time to a solution to come because as moms, we do, we have the intuition piece that comes for it, that comes natural to us and that we yes. get those answers that we're looking for, but we do not get it when we're in that firefighting, like, putting out fire. Yeah, mode. exactly. Exactly. You, you can't be in a proactive state of mind. You can't yeah. give it's, it's like you open the door and your intuition to allow yeah. you, allow you to tell you what to do, you know? Yeah. So it's going to tell you as long as you give it room to do its work. Right. Yeah. yeah. Cause if you're all full of stress hormones and cortisol and that whole thing, you can't really listen to your intuition mm -hmm. when you're in that state of mind. Also, you are still going to be kind of firefighting because you haven't fixed it yet. Let's be honest, you know, yeah. but you're kind of, you're still standing back and you're observing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the difference. You know, you're yeah. observing what's going on and you're just noticing, observing and noticing. You're not judging. Don't bother with judging. It just wastes your energy and just observing and noticing and saying, okay, I, I'm here. Where I am. This is what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then things are going to start to occur to you. Yeah. yeah. But then that's, I mean, you can apply that to anything. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like if you can go through this kind of methodical steps, you can fix, you can fix the thing that's bothering you the most. Mm -hmm. And then you can fix the thing that, that is bothering you next the most, you know what yeah. I mean? And then you fix the thing that's bothering you next the most after that, <laughs> you know, right. and these are, you can, you can tap big things. Yeah. yeah. Big things in your life this way. You just kind of keep doing that on rotation. You're like, okay, so this is the next big issue. I'm going to solve that issue. And then that moves you into a different mm -hmm. place that moves you into a more positive state of being. And then something that didn't bother you as much becomes the next issue. And you're just gradually getting yourself into a more calm place, mm -hmm. more centered, you know? more like, you have get little control that you're taking your power yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just step by step. And you, you can do this with exercise. You can do this with eating. Mm -hmm. You can do this with paperwork. It's just these same, same steps. But I mean, like for me, like I remember when I had had, oh my gosh, when I'd had my third child, we did this completely I was in a very, very, very overwhelmed state at that point. Cause mm -hmm. we had just immigrated. I, I spent a long time in the UK. I spent mm -hmm. 10 years in the UK and we immigrated back to the U S like right after having my third baby, I was so overwhelmed and I was so 
fat and I felt so physically uncomfortable. Mm. There were a bunch of house things we had to figure out initially, you know, cause I mean, I'll, I'll tell you more about that in a little while, but there were a lot of house things to sort out. But for me at that point, even though I'm an artist and creating is so important for me, that wasn't the thing that I had to figure out right then, right? What I had to figure out was my weight and my exercise so that I could feel physically well. So then I could move on to the other kinds of work that I want to do. Sometimes that what you have to do is sort yourself out physically and then the next piece will have room to breathe and then you can figure it out. And so you can figure it out. Yes. I would love yeah. to hear more on your story. I would love to hear more on your journey and what brought you to where you are today as we oh yeah yeah because you're talking a little I, bit I, about this immigration and I think that's a nice flow in to so our listeners can get the story of you yeah I'd, I'd love to share it with you thank you let's see uh, I grew up in North Carolina in the Blue Ridge Mountains I grew up in this fabulously beautiful place for which I am deeply deeply thankful mm -hmm. My household was a bit chaotic initially, well, like growing up because uh, my parents were, they fought a lot when I was really young and then they had a really messy divorce. And mm -hmm. so I went back and forth two and three times a week from the age of six onwards. And I had a little sister and I felt a really strong responsibility to look after her mm -hmm. and provide stability for her. And I think through that, I was also stabilizing things for myself, mm -hmm. you know, by looking after her. And so serving others became paramount not because it was it was funny because it was partly it was to help me but it was also just to make my world a bit more secure because they were you know my parents were in a bit of a mess my sister and i had to be very very well behaved in order to create stability for ourselves mm -hmm. right that sort of tendency to think about everybody else and not myself has been something that i've had to you know really really work with mm -hmm. over the years and to you know really look at like what my own needs were mm -hmm. But I've, I've always been passionate about artwork, like since I was very, very young. And why, by the time I got to sort of high school, I was passionate enough to where I found out about the North Carolina School of the Arts, which mm -hmm. is like an arts conservatory. And it's a, it has a high school program for visual art. When I found out about that, I thought like I had died and gone to heaven just because mm -hmm. this existed in the world. I put everything into getting into that program. I gave up all the other things I was doing. I used to be on the, you know, the varsity soccer team. I used to do like dramatic, uh, the, the mu musicals that happened in school and all this kind of stuff. I was super active, but I, I, I cut out all of that and I changed high schools to get to one with a better art department. Mm -hmm. And I just really focused on getting into that program and I got in, you know, and so that was like the first step to really going for what I wanted. And, and so I had to go to this boarding school, you know, and I, I had to leave the, the mountains, which was just ripped my heart out. But I was really, really focused. And the things I learned there were just incredible, like really like life changing mm. stuff, like really, really amazing. I got focused on the next step. And the next step was to try to get into a really good art school. Mm. Art schools in the United States are difficult because the, the top ones are all private, mm. you know, and they just cost fabulous huge amounts of money. That was pretty scary. I got kind of, you know, really intrigued by this one art school that was, had a full tuition scholarship at the time. Mm -hmm. Everybody who got in got that full tuition scholarship. So, you know, I just thought, okay, I'm just going to see if, mm -hmm. <laughs> if I can pull this off. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I went to a portfolio day and I, I met with the, the person who was there, this representative from Cooper union looked at my portfolio and, and he was kind enough to kind of really give me some advice. Mm. And, and it was uh, so lucky because he helped me strategize the best way to get in to mm. their system because it was so hard to get into. And it was hilarious. Cause I, I was actually supposed to be a transfer student, but he said, no, don't do that. They're, it's harder to get in that way. <laughs> Apply as, a, apply as a freshman. I went, okay, I'll apply as a freshman. He said, no, no. And I'm going to, here, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go for early admission, you know? And, and then if you, if you fail there, they'll, you'll get cycled in with the rest of everybody else and you'll get two tries. I said, okay, okay, I'll get two tries. You know? yeah. so, like, I apply and it's really hard because you have to do like original art pieces for that particular application. And I get in and, and I fail early admission, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Go through. And I, I actually got accepted in the second lot and I got to go to this incredible art school, <laughs> you know, which is like major triumph in my life. You yes. know? I went up to New York city and I was, you know, extremely overwhelmed by the city there, you know, mm -hmm. coming from the mountains of North Carolina, it was a real shocker. And uh, it took me a good two years to get 
really settled mm-hmm. there and felt feel like I lived there and it was my you know my my place to be and so some of my artwork ended up being about about that about mm-hmm. being in public space all the time and I, I actually created a, a, a knitted room like a red knitted room that was my fantasy of like if I could walk around in public with this thing wrapped around me then then I would feel safe <laughs> then I would, then I would, I would feel protected and I could, I could be okay. You know, that was like my final project, you know, trying to handle being in public space. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In New York city. And, and, you know, just working so hard, Mm -hmm. you know, I was, um, you know, I was having to pack a meal a day and then eat out for a meal a day. Cause I just can't face packing two meals a day because I was in my studio, like at school, you know, and so then something funny happened, which is that I got really sick. It turned out to be mold in the walls of my apartment, but I didn't know that at the time. It took a long time to me to fig- figure out what it was. It was like chronic fatigue. And I ended up having to take a semester off of art school because I knew that I wasn't physically in a state mm-hmm. to where I could produce a final exhibition. We managed to uncover the mold problem, but that final piece with the with the quilt and everything yeah. that came to be because I couldn't do anything else other than knit mm-hmm. but I really wanted to knit I really wanted to create this like warm healing space mm-hmm. where I could heal that was mm-hmm. like my fantasy my kind of creative fantasy and it really really helped honestly it did so but while while I had that semester off and I was healing and I, I got myself moved out of the space that was moldy and I started I started physically healing much much better things turned around I just found I wanted to be outside all the time. Mm. And so I actually took a job as a courier, you know, a bike messenger in New York city. And so I was, I was a messenger in New York city. So it was like a real turnaround, you know, I was really sick. And then I become this like bike messenger. (laughs) And um, I was so crazy about uh, crazy about riding my bike. And, and then I got an invitation from my old roommate and she was getting married in France. Oh, oh, I left out the most important piece. Oh no, I forgot. Part of what happened when I was really sick was that I got to a really, really low point and I realized that I didn't know how to listen to my own needs Mm -hmm. at all. I realized that I I had no idea to even know what they were. I was really depressed and I had actually gotten a bit suicidal at one point, but I realized that that was, that was the problem that I I had no idea what my needs were. Mm -hmm. And so I set myself a task of learning and finding out what they were. Mm. And I actually used to write down what, you know, things that I wanted, you know, I had like a little book of wants, you know, and if the first one was just to buy a single piece of chocolate for myself, Mm. because I was so in the habit of denying myself to such a huge extent that I wouldn't even let myself say, oh, I want, I want that piece of chocolate by the register. So I started with that. And then the next thing was to buy a smoothie for myself, even mm-hmm. though I could have made one at home for cheaper, you know, like this kind of thing. And so it just built from there. And eventually when I received this invitation and she was getting married in France, <laughs> I was tuned into myself enough to where I could realize that I wanted to go to that wedding. That was something I had never even conceived of, like to actually give myself that big of a gift to travel internationally was, you know, like way higher than I had ever reached before for myself in terms of self-care, but I decided to do it. So I told all my friends and family that I was going to do it. And I had no idea how, I don't know, it just worked really hard and saved really hard. And, and a couple of friends and family gave me my graduation gifts early. Mm. They were planning on giving me some, some money when I graduated and they gave it to me early because they knew that I was, I wanted to do this thing. And that was, that was just enough for me mm. to get the tickets. And so I went traveling in Europe for 21 days <sighs> and I wanted to go to Scotland. I wanted to go to remote Scotland. I had, I had been really fascinated by the mountains there and I just mm. wanted to go there for you know, a really long time. I'd seen this name in the guidebooks, like in the index, and it was called the Isle of Sky. And it just really stuck out to me. And so I thought, I want to go to this place. I don't know why, but I want to go to this place. You know, I mean, it seemed like a nice place, but there's lots of nice places mm-hmm. in Scotland, but I, but I don't know, but that was the place. And so I'm, I'm on this bus. I'm going through another place called Glen Coe, where I wanted to stop because it's really beautiful hiking and stuff there, but it was raining. It was raining so hard and there's nothing to do in Glen Coe except for <laughs> sit in your tent while it's raining. I decided to stay on the bus. The bus took me to Sky. It took me to the Isle of Sky. And so I got there. I found a camp campground and I set up. And the next day I went on one of the most incredible hikes I've ever been on in my mm-hmm. life. You know, like the like like feeling connected to the sky, feeling connected to the earth, like 
totally in exactly the place where I was supposed to be. You know, it was like this, like forecast for the future, you know, it was amazing, totally amazing. Mm -hmm. And I go back to the campground and this, this person had showed up. He had a little tiny, tiny tent and a bicycle and the biggest map I had ever seen. And you know me, I'm bike crazy, right? And so I look at that and I think, oh, he's on an adventure. I am gonna pick that man's brain and I'm gonna find out all about that adventure because I'm gonna do that adventure. I'm gonna go on that ride, you know? And so I walk up and start talking to him. And I was literally, I really just wanted to talk to him about his adventure. I mean, I was very like, that was the, but then he turned out to be so funny. <laughs> you know, he'd like just me laugh for ages, you know, and like I spent five hours sitting there and talking to this guy because mm. it was right after dinner and the sun doesn't set until midnight up there because, you know, the latitude, it's so mm. high latitude. And, you know, this guy, this guy turned out to be my future husband. I know, right? Wow. I know, I know. I'm married, I'm married to him. I've been married to him for, we'll be 18 years this year. He's in, he's over in the next room. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's so crazy. But if it hadn't been raining in Glencoe, and if I hadn't just followed my kind of intuition, like I just had this niggling feeling that I want to go, wanted to go to Sky, I would never have met him. So it's like those niggling feelings are absolute gold dust. Just those little tiny, quiet, quiet little thoughts. They are gold dust. And that is, that is you speaking to yourself. You know, mm -hmm. that is your intuition talking. They are the gateway to everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> you know? so true. Yeah. What a story. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible, isn't it? It's amazing. It's incredible. Wow, well, like we gotta too. celebrate that. Like, wow, yeah. like <laughs> yeah. I'm like so yeah. excited for you. And I think thank you so much for sharing all that. And I would love to talk a little bit about that receiving piece, that piece where you were like, I want to buy myself a piece of chocolate. I want to buy myself a smoothie instead of baking one in my kitchen because I yeah. deserve it. Like that yeah. so many of our listeners, so many, I mean, women, us. When it comes to receiving, we can give so freely, but when it comes to receiving, that piece is so hard for us. So I would love yes. for you to unpack, like, how did you get to the place where you were like, I'm going to get myself a trip, like a big trip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's like, by the time you've built up enough momentum to go for the big trip, mm -hmm. you've actually done the most important work before mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. it's actually that first piece of chocolate, mm -hmm. you know, like literally it was a chocolate covered cherry wrapped in tin foil but i'm telling you it was really hard for me to buy it it cost less than a dollar but it was hard it was really hard for me to buy it because the thing is is that i was plugged into my sense of security was looking after other people i was really afraid that if i looked after myself my world would fall apart that was like a big trigger for me and i know that lots and lots of people have that especially yeah. women because we're taught by society to look after others, mm -hmm. you know, we're rewarded for that. Mm -hmm. And if you're in an unstable situation, that reward can feel like security, can't yes. it? You know, I was really scared to not work one evening and take a bath, mm -hmm. you know, cause I am a very hard worker and I was, I worked every, like on my artwork all the time, you know, but to stop and say, actually, I'm just really tired and I'm just going to take a bath and not be productive this evening. That was like scary. I felt like someone was going to come and knock on my door and tell me off. I mean, I was really like frightened that first week, particularly because that the chocolate and the smoothie and the bath all happened in the first week, mm. you know, and those every single time. It was like, I felt like a fledgling, you know, trying to sort of step out of the nest and flap her wings and try to fly, you know, and I was, I was really, really scared, you know, mm -hmm. but the thing is, it's like, if you can make some safety for that scaredness, if you can just kind of like say, actually, this is just a really important part of the step. And I'm supposed to be scared right now. If I weren't being scared right now, I wouldn't be growing. That fear is a sign of you doing really good work. Mm -hmm. You got to know in your heart that you're doing really good work. Mm -hmm. And that's what that fear is about. If you've triggered something, then you got to, you know, you got to lean into it yeah. because that's where the good work is. And most of the time that's when we feel that uncomfort, when we feel that discomfort, when we're like in it and we are like, oh my gosh, that's the part where we want to go hide. That's where we're backing away and we're not leaning into it. But what you're saying is 
you've got to lean into it. You've got to, yeah. there's gold there. Yeah, that's, that's exactly where the gold is. If your heart rate starts going up and you start feeling really uncomfortable, that is absolutely where you need to be. That is, that is the magic place. And all you have to do is just kind of hang out there and see what happens. You know, people think trauma has to be like a really horrible event. It doesn't. It, all it is is emotions that you have stored in your body because you didn't know how to deal with it at the time. Yeah. That's it. So literally everyone has trauma, Yeah. right? And the trouble is, is that those, those emotions will actually steer your direction. You know, you'll actually, it'll steer your steps that you, that you choose to take either because you're, you know, a lot of times it's because you're avoiding the yeah. thing that caused you the pain initially. Right. But the thing is, if you, if you can just get into that un uncomfortable place and just sit there, mm -hmm. you know, just sit there, just allow it to happen. You don't actually have to feel the pain again. This is what a very talented therapist taught me, you know, cause I, I did go to a therapist when I, when I became suicidal and, and she taught me how to release trauma out of my body. And she said, basically, if you just feel a certain, when you're talking about something, if you feel a certain sort of like energy in, in one part of your body, you know, for me, I kind of feel like it's, it's lighting it up. Like it suddenly feels slightly warmer or slightly more uncomfortable, or you just feel a kind of hot spot. That'll be where it is. And so what you do is you just put your attention to where that place is in your body and you just sit there and, and just, just wait, mm -hmm. you know, just listen to it, you know, just hold some space for it. And it'll start to talk. You'll start to have feelings coming out. You'll maybe see colors. You might suddenly find yourself in, in a, a memory could be mm -hmm. triggered. You know, like a lot of times for me, I don't even know necessarily what the memory is. I just know where it was, mm -hmm. you know, so I can see myself in my childhood home, you know, in a certain room, you know, this kind of thing. And I don't really know what was happening because as a child, I didn't know what was happening, yeah. but that's where those feelings that, you know, that's the place where you stored them. And so then they just have a chance to talk to you and tell mm -hmm. you their story and you're not actually feeling it again. So it's not as painful as it was the first time. Right. So it's okay. You're going to be all right. That's a really, really big thing because if, if you can allow those parts to talk to you and allow them to get their uncomfortable feelings mm -hmm. out and just, just lean into that discomfort and let it sit there and, until it's done, when that part of your body is done telling its story, all of a sudden, you're going to have a lot more energy. You're going to have a lot more like there'll be, for me, it's usually like there's something that happens. Like I'll suddenly feel like I have way more security than I ever knew. Like, like that part of me just turned into a golden shield, you mm. know? So all of a sudden I'm more protected than I ever was, mm. or maybe I, I just suddenly feel stronger than I've ever felt because it's like that part of your body that's been so tied up and holding the pain suddenly gets to function. Yeah. And actually you know, you get your full ability, you know, gets to be released. Or maybe you might find that you're actually have a stronger intuition even yeah. than you did before. Like I, I had this happen recently where it was like a, a, a part of my lower back. When I released the pain in that area, suddenly it was like, I could ask that area, Hey, what do I do about this? Mm -hmm. And it would tell me it was like, I was much more connected to my intuition than I had been mm -hmm. before. So it was like my sensitivity was heightened, you know? So you, you basically like, if you can lean into those areas of discomfort and just sit with them and hold them and allow them to tell their story, you know, mm -hmm. basically you're befriending them. And then once they're done telling their story, you're going to get your abilities back. Yeah. You're literally reclaiming parts of your body and soul that were too busy holding on to pain that they didn't know how to deal with, yeah. you know? So you're literally like releasing and reclaiming parts of who you are, you know, yeah. they were all always there. They were always there. You just didn't know it because they were busy, you know, they were busy <laughs> taking care of you, trying to protect you, trying to keep you safe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I love how you talked about getting help. Like you said, I was at my lowest point and I got help. That's another thing we talked about at the beginning before we started recording is you've got to be able to ask for help, but that comes with its own work. Totally, totally. Cause it's terrifying asking for help. You know, like it was terrifying for me. It wasn't, I mean, I, I had to get suicidal for me to be hurt enough in the situation to be desperate enough mm -hmm. for me to be able to ask for help. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, and it wasn't even like I asked for help. My roommates just, I told my roommates how, how I was feeling. And they said, you have to have help. Mm -hmm. This is your assignment. You have to find a therapist. Now here are some lists of no. therapists. And I went, we you you to call them and figure out which one you're going to go to. Sometimes you get yourself in a position where you have to make the situation more desperate so mm -hmm. that you'll actually solve it, you know, so that you'll be willing to 
find the help. Yeah. And so if you can sort of start to be aware of that tendency, then you'll start to notice when you're making things desperate. Maybe you can actually ask for help before it gets so desperate. Yes, you know? that's the whole yeah. point of this Make Life Fun podcast, especially in motherhood, is because I want people to get the help now. I want them to feel safe enough to get the help now. I want them to start loving themselves enough, accepting themselves enough so that they can raise their hand and be like, you know what? I need the support. And yes. that's why I think sharing our story is so important. And it's so yeah. healing. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing to do because what you're doing is you're getting into a place where energetically that's okay. And that's mm -hmm. acceptable. And that's actually even important and promoted all the energy that you put out your kid is picking up, mm -hmm. you know, because they pick up what you do, yes. right? They don't pick up what you say, they pick up what you do. Mm -hmm. And so they are, they are picking all of that up. So every single thing that you do to heal yourself, make it easier for yourself to ask for help, mm -hmm. make it easier for you to Let's do see. the things that you want to do in yeah. life. You are creating a map for your kids. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be so much easier for them to figure it out because they've already got your example mm -hmm. and they've got that energetic map that they can follow. Yes. you know, so that they can know, they can know that something's possible, yes. <laughs> you know? And I know and you moms, can... when you tell them that they're doing it for themselves, sometimes that's like, okay, they feel that uh, maybe I'm being a little selfish. I'm doing it for myself. So you just speaking to the fact that you're doing it for more than just yourself. It's for your child. Oh. It's for your family. Yeah. Cause we're all connected. You know, mm -hmm. we're all in a pond, right? The ripples are going to hit your child. Mm -hmm. Everything that you do that is positive yeah. is going to affect your child positively yeah. and probably even more positively than some of the things that you directly do for your child, because they're, the effects are going to be so long lasting. You're showing them how to be, I mean, mm -hmm. that's our, that's our most basic job as parents, actually. You know, I mean, I know there's the whole physical thing of looking yeah. after them until they can physically handle themselves, but actually beneath all of that, and that's only for the first few years beneath all that, then you start to get to the real work of like showing them how to be, you know, mm. showing them how to handle themselves as people in this world, you know, yeah. and that's entirely done through modeling everything that you do to look after yourself and heal yourself. You are healing your child. You are healing your child because whatever you do that is not healed, they are going to pick up and everything that does get healed. They're going to pick up that too. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause they are perfect mirrors. It will mirror everything whether you like it or not. So it's our job as parents to get busy, mm -hmm. to make ourselves as happy as possible. Yes. You know? yes. Yeah. How much happiness can you handle and how much can you receive? Because it's hard for some of us to receive that pleasure and have that happiness and feel like it's okay. Yeah. Some of us are thinking, when's the other shoe going to drop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. You think it can't be this good, but actually that's not true. That's just a BS belief system mm -hmm. that is, based on scarcity is based on lack and actually has nothing to do with the way things really are. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. But actually it can be good. You can have your cake and eat it too. And mm. so can your kid. <laughs> that's, not, yeah, that's not what you hear is when you go into motherhood, you're the total opposite of that message. And so again, that is something that I think the moms need to hear loud and clear and be encouraged by. Yeah. Yeah it really is possible. And the thing is, it's like when you're in the midst of the fight of it, especially in those early years, it's really easy to think that it's not possible because you can't actually see how it could be possible. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can't like with your rational mind, you can't even get there. <laughs> right? Like that's real. That's totally normal. That's because you're on a steep learning curve. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you know, learning curves are steep because you can actually climb them. Mm -hmm. You know, that's like, I, I have a strong belief that the universe doesn't give you anything you can't handle. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the same with motherhood, you know, like more parenthood, like children are designed to push your buttons. Mm -hmm. They are, they are the <laughs> perfect person. They have, you know, you've been gifted this perfect person who is designed to make you grow as quickly as possible. They're supposed to be pushing your buttons. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's their job. You know, they're, they're like the, the teachers, you know, they're showing you where the bits are that you need to work on. You can take that any way you want to. You can say, oh, this really sucks. I'm being shown everything that's really bad, you know, about myself. I'm a bad person. I'm a bad parent. I'm not good enough for this. You can say that. You can say that, but that's not really the truth. Mm -hmm. The real truth is that your child has just given you this gift because they've shown you where you need to do your work, mm -hmm. right? They've actually shown you the area that you have the most potential in. This is the area where you have the most potential for growth. 
So if you concentrate on this area, this is where you're going to really receive. This is where this is where the like, you know, the kind of life currency yeah. is right here. You, you lean know, in, so, lean in again. It's that lean in. Yeah. It goes back to your three step of that. You're in the overwhelm. You're observing it, and then you are seeing where you can fix it and getting the solution. Again, yeah. just to say, like it comes back full circle because when you're that in that place, you can do that for yourself. Yes. Yes, you can. You can do that for yourself. You can do that for yeah. yourself. You even with your personal habits. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is a really important nugget of wisdom, <laughs> which is like, even if you think you're not a morning person, I want to try to sell you, even for the non-morning people, mm -hmm. I just want to try to sell in this idea. Okay. And that is try getting up a little bit earlier than your child mm -hmm. so that you can have time for yourself. Mm -hmm. Because as we know, it's really hard to have time for yourself when they are awake, right? That's, <laughs> yes. that's just the truth, right? <laughs> but if you can get up a little bit earlier, half an hour, an hour earlier than they do, that is the golden morning time where you can spend it on yourself, on whatever you need to do to grow and to be happy. Like that is, it is so special. If you get in a routine of this, you will look forward to this hour more mm -hmm. than any other hour of the day. <laughs> and, and also the thing is, is it fuels you so much, you know, because you, you can spend that time doing meditation or reading your book or doing stretching, you know, mm -hmm. stretching and yoga, if that's your thing, you know, doing whatever you need to work on for you to personally yeah. fill your cup or work on your project. If you're very project oriented, like me, like I want to be working on my project. That's my creation that I'm, I'm bringing into the world. You know, that's your time to work on whatever your, your personal project is. When you get up before they do, and you fill your cup with that, then you're actually happy to see mm -hmm. them. You begin the day being happy to see them and feeling this love, you know, and you're mirroring back the love and delight that they have first thing in the morning. Cause you know what, those little kids, they wake up and they're like, it's a new day Hooray for the new day you know? so excited. Yes. <laughs> and you can piggyback on that mm. you know that is a beautiful energy you know that we yes. all really want I agree. if you can get up a little earlier so that you've already done your self-care by the time they get up that's going to be really special too because mm -hmm. you can really really tap into how sweet they are how cute they are, how much they love you, mm -hmm. how much they want to snuggle when they first <laughs> gotten up, you know? And if you're already awake <laughs> when that happens, you can actually really appreciate, appreciate it much, it. much better. That's I, I that's just, a hack. Know, I like that one. <laughs> yeah. It's it's the most important hack, especially for artists. Like mm -hmm. just go to bed a little earlier and get up a little earlier. Yes. You know? It's a gift that you're giving yourself. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's a really important gift. You know, you're going to have to go to bed a little earlier. You're going to have a little less time with your partner, you know, if you have a partner, but that's okay. Cause your partner, all you, what you're doing is you're giving yourself, your partner permission to look after themselves mm -hmm. as well. And they might even copy you. They might even <laughs> decide to go to bed at the same time and start getting up early. You never know. You never you know. know. Yeah. Yeah. But whether or not they do, it doesn't matter because you've given them permission to take care of themselves because you're taking care of yourself. Care and yourself. that's going to help your marriage or your, your partnership or whatever your situation is. That is probably the most important hack. <laughs> <laughs> like give yourself the time. Yeah. 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 Time. Well, this Definitely. conversation has been so beautiful. You've shared so much golden nuggets, golden gems with us. And I really want our listeners of Make Life Fun to take it to heart and put it into practice, put it into practice for a week and just try it on, try yeah. it on and see how yeah, it yeah, fits. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Just <laughs> give it a go. See if it'll work for you. You know, yeah. if it doesn't, then you can iterate and change it and make it make something else that's going to work for you. Mm -hmm. But if you're taking that proactive step, then you open the door to taking mo more proactive steps. You know, that's really beautiful. Before we finish, I want to just say that if you need a little bit more kind of like soul food, I actually produce a new artwork every single week mm -hmm. and I send it out in my email with, you know, just a little kind of drop of beauty for you to have and enjoy. And so that's, if you get on my email list, then that's a, it's just a nice, nice thing. And then you get to also be, you know, a part of my journey and, and get to see, you know, what happens, you know, <laughs> yes, be included. Yeah, that is exactly yeah, where yeah. we're headed. And this conversation is, I want our listeners to celebrate you, to connect with you, to be in your world so they can be inspired by you. 
So yeah, tell us how they can get up on your email list and join that and where they can follow you on social as well. Yeah. So the, the place to go is my website. If you want to get on my email list, which is the, that's, that's the way I feel most comfortable expressing mm -hmm. myself. So mm -hmm. I always want to steer people there first. And you can just go to www.jennykeen.com and there's a sign up page at the top. You'll only get one email a week because I'm never, ever going to produce more than one email a week. God help me. <laughs> I, it's never going to happen. So that uh, one yeah, exactly. email is precious because like you said, it is like a hit of joy and delight for you for the day, for the week for you to savor yeah. with your artwork and the artwork tells such a great story. It does make you feel something. <laughs> yeah. And then also when I come out with offers, they're going to go directly to my email list too. I've got a really nice offer that I'm going to be giving out pretty soon where you can yeah. actually get a free, free print of mine, you know, just yes. for, just for taking part. So that's going to be, you know, rolled out within, you know, the next week or two. So okay. It's yeah. A, it's an exciting thing. Yeah. Yeah. Please yeah, tell yeah. Us and more there. about that. This is huge because a few free print of your work. You want this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I've created this collection that I call the Serenity Collection. It's basically artwork that I made for myself that I desperately needed when I had all these children and they were so intense, you know, and there was so much going on all the time and mama, 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 you know, like all the, all the mama. I created a corner in my bedroom, which is luckily my, my bedroom is right off of the main room. So I could just step out, out of the fray and I could look at these, these artworks and it would help me come to a more centered place. It was like, so it was my reset corner. I could go and just take some deep breaths. I do a lot with text so I could read the text and then that would just help me come back to a more centered, grounded kind of place. And so once I'd taken a few deep breaths and had my moment, then I, I could go back into it feeling refreshed, mm -hmm. you know, and more able to handle the challenges that were in front of me. I literally made that for myself and had it in place for years before I, I decided to make prints out of it. And now I'm making prints out of it. Yes. So. <laughs> and helping other people create yeah. their wall of inspiration, their wall of serenity, their wall of I need a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Because the more you change your environment to help support you in what you want, the easier it is to do, mm -hmm. you know, like, so it's much easier to take a deep breath. For instance, if you've got an artwork there on the wall that says, take a deep breath. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So you got to jump yeah. on that listeners, mamas, you got to jump on that. And that is on her website. You'll be able to do that and join her mailing list so that when this goes out, you'll be the first to know. I know that some people are not that good with email. And so I do, I am on social media stuff as well. So if you want to follow me on socials on Instagram or Facebook, it's at Ginny Keen Art. Oh, yeah. this conversation was so delicious. It warmed my heart. And after this conversation, I always love to give the floor to you, Jenny. And you express whatever is on your heart left to share that you feel called to. I guess I just want to tell all the mothers and, and parents out there that actually you have enormous power to change your situation for the better. And every step you take changes the situation for your entire family mm -hmm. for the better. And even if you can't feel that power right now, because you're feeling so crushed, by all the other things, it's actually still there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's actually still there. So figure out what's bugging you most, take some time to observe the problem, put in a solution. And you know what? You're actually going to solve things and you're mm -hmm. actually going to start to gain momentum. And then the problems that were driving you crazy will become a memory. Mm -hmm. The next thing that you work on is not going to be as hard because you, you're gaining momentum. You're, mm -hmm. you're getting stronger and you're getting, you're also gaining faith in yourself. Your confidence is not something that you just have, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, some people are taught it by their parents because their parents model it for them. And that's super cool. And I'm really happy for those <laughs> people, but a lot of people don't have that. And I certainly did not as well. And so confidence is actually something that you get as a result of taking positive mm -hmm. action. So you don't need to have faith. You don't need to be confident. You don't need to even believe that it will work. You just have to keep taking positive action. That is the only thing that you have to do. And then the more steps you take in that direction, the more you are going to start to feel the effect of it. And the more you're going to trust yourself. Mm -hmm. 
and the more problems you solve, the more you're going to trust yourself. And then that's, it's that trusting yourself. Mm -hmm. That's where the confidence blooms, Yeah, you know, but it's kind of like, it's like confidence is like a, a flower that will bloom, mm -hmm. but you have to give it, you have to create the environment that will make it bloom. Yeah. You know, you have to create the garden, you have to water it, but you can't just suddenly magically make a flower. That's not how it works. Nope. You have to take positive action and step by step that positive action is is tending the soil that positive action is 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 you know giving it water and sun mm -hmm. and then the confidence will just bloom it's a side effect it you know it's a side effect of positive action you know you are absolutely able to do this whether or not you believe you can right now mm -hmm. you know like 100 percent. i can tell you for 100 percent, you are absolutely able to change your life for the better even if you think it's impossible, mm -hmm. you just have to act on it anyway. Yes. Yeah. Take the uncomfortable step forward for yourself, for your family. And that is yeah. just brilliant. Thank you so much, Jenny, for being here, for your wisdom, for being you and sharing your story because it matters. Thank you. Oh, it's my, my absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. I hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little, little gems, little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart, that you are not just listening, but you're gonna do something about it. I want you to be fired up. So yes, so we come once a week, come back, listen to us here. We are on all podcast places you listen. We are also on YouTube if you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman. You can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby. <laughs> and we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us. And thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show. Follow us, leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools, it's simple, it doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, yeah, so come hang out with me, jump into my world. I've got you.